So, welcome back to another video. This is going to be an unboxing of this. This is the Quattro Ductless Burnout Fume Hood. Now, we needed something like this because we are renting a space and putting in, you know, proper HVAC, uh, heating, air conditioning, all that like, you know, duct work and stuff isn't really something that we wanted to do. And we're also in the middle of downtown Peterborough. So even if we did have duct work going outside, we would probably still have to worry about the fumes and the smell and stuff. Um, I mean, like most cities, it never really goes fully to sleep. So we have people out, you know, 24 seven. And um, the last thing I want is a complaint and then have to put in like an additional filtration system. So we just went dirt simple, something like this. This is basically just a four stage filter system that's gonna take out all of the fumes from burnout and recycle the air back into the room. Now, hopefully it does its uh, due diligence and makes sure it's not pumping out toxic fumes. That would be a bad thing, obviously. But um, I have some faith that they will be able to do what they're saying they're gonna do. Now, this uh, I got for the reasons I just stated, but it also comes with uh, the option later on, if we expand into basically just by switching out the media, like it's very, very simple, switch out the media, and this then becomes a ductless plating fume hood. If at some point we get to the point where like, you know, my little kiln doesn't quite cover it anymore, we need to go big, and we need this monstrous ventilation system, this will then be used for something else. It's not just gonna be something we sell or, you know, put under the rug or, you know, put in a corner. Anyway, let's open this up because I haven't opened it up yet and I'm excited and I want to see everything that's in there. I'm questioning the decision to put this up on the table now. Uh, take two. Okay, so let's do this from the floor because this thing is too big and too tall for me to do this safely on a, uh, on a tabletop. This was effectively the last piece of the puzzle for this studio. We needed this ventilation, and now I can officially say we can do casting as soon as I get this up on the wall. Oh boy, I don't know what this is. The hood assembly, interesting. So this may be what goes on the wall. And there's the main unit. There we go. Oh, it's actually variable speed too. So we can kind of dial in how much fan noise we want to deal with. And we'll see, of course, how well it performs relative to uh, everything else. That's a pretty serious fan in there. It's great. Oh. Hmm. All right, I got it out of the box. It is a hefty unit. I am going to have to see how well this goes on the wall because it's like 75 pounds. Now, I'm not going to be using like you know, drywall screws, anchors. I'm gonna to try to find studs, but, geez, this is heavy. Oof. Oof. There you have it. It's a box of wonder. <laughs> Let's open up this front panel, just because I'm curious, why not? Warning, before using your system, First time, remove all filters except for the HEPA filter. We'll go through this in a sec. Interesting. Ah. So 
So this seems to be all of the filter systems. They're all wrapped in plastic. It's a good thing I took off that panel because otherwise they would do absolutely nothing. But wow, look at that. I retract what I said about, oh yeah, I hope this works. That is some heavy filter. Ugh. This is why it weighs so much. It's because of all these charcoal filters. Wow. And then the serious fan on top, and that just draws everything up through. Wow. So it looks like the first stage is just particulate, kind of like, I don't know what level of filtration that is, but it seems to be HEPA, HEPA, I think. I'm not sure. Anyway, this one will just get out initial particulate. And it seems this one's... These two seem to be the same, but I won't make any assumptions because they might have different part numbers. Uh, no, actually, they have the same part number. So these are both the same units and they look like a charcoal or something. There's some particulate that's come you know, a little bit out of these little, this, this grate. And I assume that's what's going to be doing the majority of the work. And then there's one on top here, and this is another filtration system. Maybe that's the HEPA one, and this is just an initial. I don't know yet. But we'll see. Very interesting. I will have to get the plastic off of these filters. But this is it, really. Like it's it's got one job, and I will of course be able to do a further video after this going on about how well it's performing. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the electronics. Doesn't seem to be too complicated. Yeah, it's just on off. It's got a little breaker. That's good. Power. And then the uh, dial. So cool. It's pretty simple. Um, I'm going to have to figure out exactly how well it performs. And I will, of course, report back to you guys. Uh, I'm going to have to take all this out, get it unpackaged. And I think I might actually leave it out as this is so heavy uh, until it's mounted on the wall. Yeah, like one of these things is like maybe 10 pounds-ish. They're not light. Oh, and just something else to note. Um, what I was told, now we'll of course be able to confirm this as we use it. Uh, what I was told is that if I'm doing about one cast a week, these filters should last 18 months. So that's pretty good. Um, on a, to refill, to get new filters, uh, I can order it through Guesswin. Uh, and they will, of course, get it from Quattro. Uh, they are about $250 for a filter replacement. Now, I'm not sure if I would need to do that twice because there's two cartridges here. Um, we'll have to see exactly. Oh, yeah, that's not bad. But anyway, we'll have to see exactly how how it all functions. Um, if it's like 500 bucks for a refill, that's pretty steep in my opinion. But then again, 18 months worth of, yeah, well, it's, uh, it's right on that border. I mean, it is a little bit better than just spewing this stuff out into the environment because, you know, particularly in my case, because I'm doing a lot of 3D printed resins, um, the resins, I, I know with the wax, the wax produces formaldehyde. Um, with the resins, I can't imagine it's much better, if not worse than like what's going out into the environment. So uh, we'll see. I'll have to let you guys know because I'm pretty fascinated by this. Um, this was definitely a, this was definitely the best in terms of cost to function for us. Uh, I mean, let's say that this whole space doesn't work at some point and we maybe we buy a house or something and I move all my stuff into the basement and we just kind of do small time jewelry work, take a few clients here and there. Well, I could easily put this in the basement. I could easily put this unit in the basement and I can still work. I can still cast, which is great. And like I mentioned at the beginning, I can always swap out these media filters for something that does rhodium plating. And then I'm set for plating too. So overall, I think this was a pretty good buy. Uh, it's definitely gonna be cheaper than getting your HVAC guy to come in, drill holes in the wall, explain to your landlord, I mean, assuming you don't own the place, of why you're doing this uh, and then you know spewing stuff into the environment so it's um 
yeah, it was definitely some. I, I <laughs> listen to me go. I'm trying to sell myself on this idea right now. Uh, it was just a pretty big chunk of change, so I'm a little bit like, eh, I really need this to work. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next video after I've done a little bit of testing. Um, well, definitely after the first burnout, I will let you know how well it turned in terms of like noise, uh, if there's any smell, um, the pull, you know, things like that. We'll just we'll go into de into depth about how well it's functioning out of the box, and then I'll probably do an update video in maybe a year or six months how well it's still working. So I will see you guys in the next video. Uh, you thought it was the end of the video. Um, well, I said I was gonna mount this thing to the wall and I did. Uh, the instructions turned out to be pretty simple. Um, the mounting mechanism is very secure. It's like heavy duty. It's basically a mounting plate under here. And this big heavy mounting plate then bolts onto here. So I used like eight anchors. Um, I tried to get into studs. I have like a stud finder. Uh, this thing isn't the best, but uh, I mean, it, it was reading some studs and then they just didn't turn out to be studs. So anyway, I've got like you know, 200 pound uh, drywall anchors in there um, per piece, something like that. And I think that thing is 75, so it's going to be fine. Um, it is it is what it is now. Uh, I've got the hood part attached, obviously. Um, it says that this needs to be a minimum of 10 inches above the kiln. The kiln is currently over there on the floor, among all the other stuff. And uh, yeah, it's, it seems to be working great. Now, I will note that it is not quiet. So this is just ramping up. It's getting pretty noisy. Now I don't know exactly what setting we're going to have to go on because this is on a dial. This is currently the lowest setting. Uh, when it's like when I put it up to max, it sounds like a jet, like a crazy jet engine. Uh, I don't know if that's really something that's fixable. Like they do say they sell a silencer, which I assume kind of, I'll put it up here. You'll probably see better than I will. So there's the fan. I assume there's like a silencer that mounts to the top. What exactly, how exactly you silence something like this, I don't really know, but maybe it's worth a call anyway, see what, how much it costs. If it's like 50 bucks and it makes, um, you know, maximum speed more tolerable, then maybe we'll go with that option, we'll see. Um, I definitely don't, obviously I won't be getting the tabletop mount, and I'm really glad I didn't because my kiln is, it's a golden oldie, but it works. And I think this, with the electrical box, is now too wide compared to that. So I'm glad I didn't go with that option because I would have been stuck with some bent metal that wouldn't have worked. But I do have options. I do have some steel plates that I will put against the back of the wall and along the sides. And they're actually like, they slide apart a little bit so I can adjust the width. And then maybe I'll, like, that'll just be protection for the wall. Um, not that I'm expecting to have, like, anything hot against the wall. I will pull, we'll pull it away a little bit. Um, but just, you know, something to enclose, keep all the, the fumes going in the right direction up. And maybe I'll even put, like, a cover over, over here or something just to protect and prevent any fumes from coming out from air turbulence. I don't know. We'll see how all this works. But anyway... Duckless fume hood mounted to the wall, coming together.